Welcome to your video tutorial for the Grade 4 and 5 Math Online Test. We'll be using a Grade 5 Math Test today, but don't worry. The Grade 5 and Grade 4 tools are the same. Learning one means you've learned the other. Let's begin by entering your name into the Student Name section. Do not forget to capitalize. Click Start Test Now. Then, click Start Section. You should be looking at this window. And this window is very similar to the ELA window you have already mastered. You can navigate back and forth in the same way, and flag and review in the same way. You'll also see the pointer and answer eliminator buttons you've seen before. So much of this should be familiar. Let's talk about what's different. First, note this button to the right that reads Exhibits. Click on that. Clicking Exhibits will pull up a reference sheet. This is information you may need to complete the test. The reference sheet here shows some unit conversions as well as a formula. Scrolling through helps you access all of the different reference materials that you may use. This sheet is for your use. If you do not remember the conversion between a mile and feet, don't worry. The reference sheet will show you. Use it as you need to. When you're finished with it, or if you're not using it, click X. You can access exhibits at any time by clicking this button. Let's look at item number one. Jim uses ribbon to make bookmarks. Jim has nine feet of ribbon. He uses one third foot of ribbon to make each bookmark. What is the total number of bookmarks Jim makes with all nine feet of ribbon? That should be a fairly simple computation for many of you and the answer is 27. You'll notice though that we don't have multiple choice options. Instead, you must simply type your answer into the box. As it reads, enter your answer in the box. Use the pointer to click in the box and you'll see that it highlights. Type 27 and your answer is entered. Remember, you don't need to click submit or save to enter your answer. It's entered and you're ready to move on. Be very careful with answer, answering this question. Since it is not multiple choice, you must type correctly. Let's move to item number two. Item number two looks quite different. Let's scroll to make sure we can see all of it. This is a graphing item, and as you read, you'll see that it asks you to graph three points, A, B, and C, on the coordinate plane. It gives you the coordinates to plot the points. Read the last sentence. Be sure to graph all three points. The three is bold, and that tells you that you must answer three questions. Let's try plotting point A. Point A has an arrow next to it, and that means that we're ready to plot it. If we were plotting point B, the arrow would be there. Clicking on point A shows that we're plotting point A, and it will be blue. That point is at 4, 6. Let's say I've clicked there, but that's not where I wanted to plot the point. Click on the point again, and it goes away. Then I can replot. If I'm ready for B, I'll click B. When I'm ready for C, I'll click C. Once I have answered all three questions and plotted all three points, I'm finished. Be sure that you answer the entirety of the question and don't move on until you have. If you decide that you made a mistake with point A and you wish to replot, do not forget to click on point A, otherwise you won't be able to move it. Clicking on these buttons to the left gives you the power only to address that particular point, C, B, and A. Why don't you try it for a moment? Are you ready to move on? Excellent. Then let's use the navigation buttons to move forward to item 7. 
you remember how to notice if you're on item 7? You'll see that right here. 7 of 36. Item 7 is a simple multiple choice question. Which explanation about figures is correct? This looks the same as any ELA item. You'll see a little circle, and when the pointer hovers over, you can click in the circle to answer your question. You can also use the answer eliminator here in the toolbar to cross out items that you know are incorrect. Remember that clicking on the X makes it go away and you can answer whatever you'd like. Use the answer eliminator to cross out items you know are incorrect. When you're ready to answer, select the pointer again and select in the circle. Let's move back to item number four to see something else we've seen already. Do you notice what's different? Item four is asking which two statements are true. See the bold? Remember that I've told you, the bold will indicate how many answers you must give. And you should remember from the ELA tutorial that these boxes appear instead of circles. The boxes show you that you must answer two of these items, not simply one. And as you scroll down, you can see that five options exist. Be sure before you move on to select at least two. Don't select three, don't select four, and don't only select one. Answer the entire question and be careful about reading the instructions. As I said, that should be familiar to you from the ELA tutorial. Let's look at something else that should be familiar by moving to item 6. Item 6 is another drag and drop item. and You can drag and drop these numbers into the appropriate blanks. If you decide that that is not correct, you can move it back out. Let's look at this question. Drag and drop one number into each box. When you are finished, the number inside each box should match the number below the box when rounded to the nearest hundredth. Hmm. So, 5.108 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 5.11. That's my answer. 5.066 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 5.07. 5.079 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 5.08. And 5.103 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 5.10. You can see that I have two answers left over, but I have completed this question. Dragging and dropping works in much the same way it works on the ELA test. And as you've probably mastered it there, you'll master it here easily. Let's move on to a math specific tool. Move to question 9. Question 9 looks quite a bit different. It has this text field, this box that you must enter your answer into but you'll also see this little dotted line box here. This shows that you're working with a powerful math tool called the Equation Editor. Let's read the question to find out what we're doing. Isabel lives three quarters of a mile from school. Janet lives two thirds of a mile from school. How much farther, in miles, does Isabel live from school than Janet? Enter your answer in the space provided. Enter only your fraction. In a simple text field, entering a fraction could be difficult. The equation editor will help you enter an equation or a special character or number like a fraction or a mixed number or a greater than or less than equation. These buttons here will tell you what you are using. This is the fraction button and as you hover over it you can see fraction, different from the one to the right which is a mixed number. Let's see what our answer might be. You might be a little bit confused 
as to how to work this question without blank paper. But you will have access to blank paper on the test. So, if you have blank paper next to you, you can work out the problem. Take a moment and see if you can find the answer. Did you come up with the answer 1 12th? Excellent. Let's try entering that. Click on the fraction button. You'll see that my one dotted line square turns into two. The dotted line square shows where your number will appear. I'll type the one, and that appears in the top. Now if I type 12, oh, it still appears in the top. Let's use the backspace button. So how do I enter the 12? I can do this in two ways. I can click down here, and that's the 12. Or I could, if I'm up here in the top, tap the tab key, and that will move me down to the bottom. Clicking or using the tab key will help you move through easily. This question, once again, is now answered without any submit or save. The equation editor will give you powerful access to special math characters. Use those math characters to enter the answer as you've been taught by your math teacher. Practice with this for a moment. Perhaps practice with mixed numbers, absolute values, or parentheses. Become comfortable with the equation editor. Are you ready to move on? Then let's move to item 10. Item 10 asks a question that you should answer in the box, as we've seen before, but let's try something a little bit different. We won't answer this question right now. Instead, I'd like to use it to practice a couple of tools that you've seen in the toolbar. Look up here. You can see a, a ruler and a protractor. Let's try the ruler. When we click on the ruler, a ruler appears that we can click and drag around the screen. You'll see that it's slightly transparent, and that will make it easier for you to measure lines. Let's try measuring the back line. I can line this up and see that this back line measures about four and a half inches. What if I wanted to measure an angled line? That's pretty difficult, unless I grab a circle and angle my ruler. Then I can move the ruler to where I need in order to measure. And I can see that this is approximately one and a half inches. Easy enough, right? Move the ruler around and practice with it for a moment. Try to measure different lines see how long they are, and see if you can master using the ruler's angling function. When you're finished, turn the ruler off by clicking on the ruler button. Now let's try the next tool. Right next to the ruler is the protractor. Click on the protractor and move it around the space, just as you would the ruler. You can use a protractor to measure angles when the question requires you to. And just like the ruler, you can angle the protractor if you wish. Try moving the protractor around as well. See how well you might be able to measure angles in this image. Practice with the protractor so you can move it and angle it as you wish. Remember that you can use both circles in order to angle. When you are finished with the protractor, you can turn it off again.
Are you ready to move on? Let's turn the protractor off. When you have finished with your test, you will see an exit window. Let's take a look at it by clicking Review, moving to the last question, clicking View, and moving Next. This exit window looks just like an exit window for an ELA test. It will tell you how many questions you have not answered. Remember that at the end of a test, if you left any questions unanswered, click Review to take a look at them again. Scroll through and see the answers that you have not answered, those items you have flagged, or those items you have answered. We've covered this in the ELA test. Once you are ready to submit, you may submit final answers, but be careful. Only submit final answers when you are sure you are ready to go. Those are the basic tools for a math test. They're easy, right? Play with the math test and practice. Master these tools before you take the actual test. I have no doubt you'll master them in no time, and you'll be ready for success. Good luck.